Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you don't already know, my name is Lauren and I am a licensed nail tech here on YouTube. And today I wanted to do a Valentine's Day and chocolate themed nail art tutorial, which I have seen all over. Like the Japanese nail girlies have been doing it for the past couple years. I've seen it on, I think, the Japanese nail art website called Nailbook. Valentine's Day is coming up probably sooner than you think. I wanted to come on here and give it my best try, so if you wanted to follow along with me, you totally can. You don't have to use the products that I used, the exact ones. You can use anything that you have similarly. Most of the products that I use today are from Zillaboo and Cocoas. I do have a discount code with Zillaboo, if you wanted to use it, it is you got nails 10 for 10% off at checkout. So so to get started, these are the three brushes I'm going to be using. You can use anything similar to these, they'll just be helpful for you. I'm using my Elena hand that I did show in my previous video, which was like a haul, a massive Black Friday haul. Um, I'm just prepping the tips with my file and then wiping them with alcohol and one of my nails just totally came off but that's okay and then I'm just gonna use this jello jello peel off base coat um, it was just the only base coat I had on hand so you can use any type of base coat I think I did get this from Zillaboo it's really not a half bad uh, base coat. I actually really like it. I'm gonna cure that and for the pointer finger, I'm gonna go in with this Nail Thoughts Hazelnut Creamer Base. It's like a tinted builder base. I really like it. At my salon, it's honestly one of my most popular base colors. But I'm just gonna do a very thin coat of it here. I'm also not gonna cure this just yet. I'm gonna take these little pink shell pieces that I got from Nail Labo, and I'm just kind of crushing them up with my fingers and placing them into the gel. It's kind of giving a, I was going for a candy effect where there's kind of, you know, colored chunks in there. And I really like pink because, you know, it's Valentine's Day, so why not? So then I'm gonna cure that once all the pieces I put down are in the place I like them to be. I'm gonna cure for about 60 seconds. You could do it twice, honestly. And then I'm, once it's fully cured, I'm gonna go back over it with the tinted base color to kind of smooth it all out, but also make the pink not as vibrant. It doesn't have to be a totally perfect application because you are going to file over it very smooth once it's done and cured. I'm also just going to move right along to the next nail. I'm going to put down this color from Leaf Gel which is like a really nice nude. And then for some reason, my camera just turned off after this point, so I totally thought I filmed it here. But I'm going to show you another clip in a second where I'm in, in like a totally different outfit because I filmed it after this. So just bear with me. But it's actually a really easy way to do a marble effect or tie-dye. So I'm just going to put on a thin layer of this color then cure it for 60 seconds yep there's me different day the nails are already done but once that layer is cured I'm gonna go in with the brush and put down pretty thick stripes of color on the nail 
and you want to leave enough space for another color to go in between the stripe you just put down and you don't cure it just yet so I have about three big stripes there and then in between those stripes I'm gonna put the darker color in between I know it's kind of hard to see because my camera kept going in and out of focus but you're just kind of gently dragging the color down and you want to make sure you have enough color on there that it's not going to be patchy it's going to be even and you take a liner brush and you just go from one side with a long even stroke very carefully and you want to leave enough space because once you go all the way down the nail in one direction you switch and you go the opposite way while the polish is wet and I'm just using my thumb to wipe off the excess color but it's kind of looking like the fancy chocolates that you sometimes see or maybe you've gotten where it's like a really pretty marble effect a drizzled chocolate moment if you will and once I'm done I just clean off the nail the color and then you just cure that for about 60 seconds and I think it looks really cool and now we're back and it also cut off I just put down a thin layer and cured it of that same dark brown we just used it's also another leaf gel color I really love leaf gel highly recommend if you've never tried them to give them a try and I'm just applying a pretty thin layer and then I'm gonna cure that I'm gonna go in again with a second layer it really is a beautiful chocolatey brown color which is exactly what we're going for Also, you'll notice I didn't finish each nail before I moved on to the others. This is kind of what I normally do at the salon. I kind of do all the base work first and then I go back in. I'm just also, once I have two coats of that chocolate color nice and cured, I'm going to take a matte top coat and just go over the pinky with it and cure that. Put that in for 60 seconds and then I'm gonna do a strawberry effect on this ring finger I'm taking I believe it's a party balloon red from Cocoist because I thought it was giving the most strawberry-esque red that I had and I'm gonna do a thin layer of that color and cure it for 60 seconds This is a very flattering red, by the way. I also find that I really don't group go through my potted gels as much as you would think you would. You get a, a lot of color in those little jars if you use them sparingly. You really don't have to slap it on there. And then once I do two coats of that, I'm taking a thicker gel to give a 3D effect where I'm just dragging it diagonally across the nail in stripes, leaving a decent amount of space because you want it to kind of almost make a V once you've gone the opposite way. And you're not carrying this until much later, so you want a type of gel that is not gonna run, it's gonna like hold its shape. I'm using the Make N, I believe it's the Parts Gel. So it, it holds its shape pretty well. And once I've gone one direction diagonally on the nail, I'm gonna go the opposite way. Going down vertically. I 
believe I'm using the Izemi short liner brush here. We still have not cured yet. I also have to say, not only is this gel good for light 3D work, it's also amazing at charms. So once you have those V diamond shapes, you're going to want to round each of the corners so it's not really sharp. They all have a soft, rounded edge to them. And if you need to go do this twice after you cured it the first time to give it more of an effect, you totally can. I actually did end up doing that. But I really do like this gel because it's thin and it's holding its shape for this, which is perfect. So once all those edges are softened up a little bit, you can totally cure that. I did um, 60 seconds twice just because that's normally what this gel needs, I believe. I could be wrong, but I just did it anyway. I normally always do that for 3D gel work. I double cure it just to totally make sure. Personally, I don't really like to eat strawberries. I know this is controversial. <laughs> but once it's cured, I take a white polish and I just place a tiny little dot in every little diamond space there is to look like the seeds that strawberries have. I think I originally tried a yellow but it was a little too yellow so the white actually worked out pretty well. And it's just a tiny little dot. They honestly don't need to be uniform because I don't think strawberry seeds are that uniform either. But make sure you get into every little cross hatch that you did. And then you cure that. I did about 60 seconds. I think I was trying to drag the dots a little bit to make them look like a seed a little bit more and more visible. And then I just took a very thin top coat, but I'm showing you the side profile view because you can see that even with the top coat, the 3D effect is still there. Next, moving on, I'm going to take this heart shape mold and this glitter gel from Zillaboo, and I'm just gonna fill that. I took a pretty huge chunk out of this red. I did a very thin layer of this red glitter on top and cured it for 60 seconds and then I just kind of filled it with the clear gel so it would hold shape. And then I'm going back in with this Make-In Parts Gel which we used for the strawberry and I'm just going to use that to cure this little heart charm onto the uh, pointer finger we did before just because I think it's fun and why not? I believe the mold is also from Macon. And then I'm gonna go back to that pinky that we did and I'm going to take the same brown that we used but mix it with a little bit of a 3D gel. And I'm just gonna kind of make a drizzle effect. You know how some chocolates have a really pretty drizzle effect that's very shiny on top of the chocolate? I really wanted the drizzle to stand out, that's why I did the matte top coat. And the drizzle, honestly, you do however abstract you want. I think it looks really cool. And then I take a top coat and I go back over those drizzles. And then here I'm just, you know, I have a little bit of the too much jean, so I said why not just add some gold flake to this middle finger. Kind of reminds me of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory a little bit. This little gold foil. 
And then I'm going to go in with a top coat. I think this is from Luna Beauty Nail Australia? Aust something like that. This is also in a haul I posted over a year ago, I think. This is a nice top coat, actually. And I'm just gonna top coat all these babies. Also, I realized I didn't do the thumb, but I would make the thumb the same as the pinky. If you were to totally recreate this on someone, I think the pinky nail and the would be nice if you were to do it on the thumb, too, to kind of tie it all in. Or you could do like a brown, a matte brown with a strawberry slice. You could do like a 3D strawberry slice would be cool. If you guys recreate this, tag me on Instagram so I can see and I'll totally repost it. And then here is the final and finished look. How do you guys think it came out? This hand looks so realistic, it's kind of crazy. I had a lot of fun coming up with this, so let me know what you think, and if you like this video, please like and subscribe and comment, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye!